What's going on everybody, Buzz here, and I know that a lot of you have been enjoying Outriders, but you have been really struggling against the painful RNG mechanics. You end up coming across gear that looks enticing, but it has one or two wrong attributes for your build, or maybe the attributes look perfect, but the mobs are all wrong, and you just get caught in this vicious cycle of constantly trying to juggle gear because you want the mod, but then the gear piece has anomaly power, and you're going for DPS, so it's not going to work. You end up getting frustrated because you want to hit that in-game content, you want to solo those CT15s, but the gear is not up to par, and now you're just getting killed because you can't put out enough damage or heal fast enough and you just end up turning the game off just messing around with some of the math on a gear piece for example let's just use the helmets there are three main attributes bonus firepower anomaly power and health then you have the secondary attributes of close range damage long range damage status power cooldown reduction skill life leech and healing received and just when you thought we were done throw into the mix 38 tier 1 mods 66 tier 2 mods and 34 tier 3 mods and from those 147 different available attributes and mods, we are trying to find the perfect piece that has three right attributes and two mods that will perfectly match our builds. Now just plugging in the available selections to a basic permutations calculator, and it comes out to something like 6.86 to the 10th power which is an insanely large number of possibilities that we can find on our gear. And remember, we are just talking about the helmets here. Forget about all the different weapon variants, gear pieces, and I don't want to even get into the different armor rolls on gear and how they fall into basic ranges. So what do we do about all this? How do we fight back against this brutal RNG loot machine? Well, that's what I'm going to be discussing today. I'm going to be showing you ways to maximize your loot returns, how to farm efficiently, what to look for, activities to use to farm, and what you should try and avoid as you strive towards that end goal of a perfectly crafted build. But before we begin the video, if you haven't yet smashed that sub button for more intensive Outriders content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. How I like to farm for gear for a build may differ from some of you out there, but I try to follow a very simple three-step plan centered around planning, farming, and then recalibration. And I do not change from this blueprint. Now, just using my pyro tank build that I posted yesterday as an example, and going into the farming stage for this build, I had already taken a good long look at the skill tree and basically planned out my route with the different nodes to unlock as I went through this build. Now, because I was trying to create a close range pyro tank, I knew that from the skill tree, I was going to want anomaly power to enhance my skills in melee, as well as armor, health, and perks that would enhance my ability to penetrate enemy bosses' armor and resistances. Now, paired with that, I could also see that I was going to need a lot of anomaly power, status power, skill life leech, and if that was not available, cooldown reduction. And that is what I set out to farm. You see, too many times you get sidetracked by the shiny objects in this game with the fancy graphics, and I'm guilty of this as well. We see those epic and legendary pieces show up as loot, and they look awesome with the honeycomb accents around the gear piece symbol, the different color backgrounds, and the two mods, and we instantly think this has to be the best gear in the game, because look how bright and shiny the graphics are. And if you fell for that trap, then you have instantly slowed down your build progression. You see, Outriders works in the complete opposite manner than other looter shooters in that the best gear in the game actually looks the worst when you first loot it. What I mean is that if you were trying to put together a perfectly crafted build with all the right mods and attributes, you almost always want to try and avoid epic and legendary gear. There is very little customization available for us if we equip and use one of those pieces. So step number one when I am farming is to decide upfront what attributes I'm wanting for my build and then farm those specific attributes. If I loot a piece of gear that has the right mods that I'm looking for but doesn't have the right attributes, it immediately gets broken down for materials. I mean, we can always change a mod, but the attributes are what they are. So if I'm looking for, say, DPS gear for my Techno build, and I only want bonus firepower, close range, and long range damage, and the piece I loot doesn't have those attributes, it's an instant full stop, I just trash it and move on. Now, if the piece meets all three attribute requirements for my build, then I move on to the next step, and that is the mods. 
Now I actually prefer to loot common and rare loot because it hasn't yet been locked in with mods like epic and legendary items. I get to start fresh with the lower level gear items and that will make a huge difference in your builds once you fully improve and level up the correct pieces. And here is where I wanted to crush a common misconception about farming gear on one class that you were going to be using on another class because it has zero effect on the gear. If I am on my pyro build and I get the perfect attributes to show up on a rare piece of gear and it comes with a pyro specific class mod in slot one, that does not mean that it won't work on my techno build once I have started the mod process. It just simply means that when I do improve the rarity, I need one of the three choices the game presents me with to work for my techno build. That way, I get the correct mod in slot two. And then I can go back in and mod slot one overriding the wrong class mod to exactly what I want, whether that be a tier two or tier three mod. Only once I have the exact attributes and the correct mods will I then go in and level up the item and max out the attributes. Okay, so it all sounds great in theory, but even after using this method of pre-screening the gear for attributes and then rarity, it will still fail more times than it succeeds. But at least I have a much better chance of getting the perfect gear that I want. Now what you want is to reduce the amount of probabilities from that absurdly high number I spoke of earlier on the helmets, and you want to get it down to something more manageable, so that you were looking for maybe 10 tier 2 mods out of the possible 66 that are currently in the game, because when you improve the rarity of a rare gear piece, the game will show you 3 random tier 2 mods you get to choose from. I mean, it's still not the best odds, but much better than just waiting around for the game to drop that perfect piece of gear for us. And this brings us to step two in this entire process, and it's the farming itself. And there are several areas that you really want to concentrate on, and then there are a few spots that I would avoid. So starting off with the best areas for farming lots of gear in a very short time, and we of course need to start off with the Monster Hunt questline. If you were quick about it and skipped the cutscenes, you can knock out this entire hunt in about 30 minutes on World Tier 1, which I would recommend for the lower gear that drops. Once done, turn it all in with Noah Dembele and collect your guaranteed legendary gear piece, but what you are really wanting are those common and rare gear pieces you accumulated during your hunts, not only from the monster bosses themselves, but also the chests that are randomly located in their arenas. Another really quick farm is to activate the monster hunt and then travel directly to the dunes map location and take on Horus over and over. Now there are actually two behemoth bosses located in the final area and they drop a ton of loot. So just quickly kill them, collect the loot and let the remaining hordes of creatures kill you off. Now for this farm, you could either do it on world tier 1 for the lower level gear, or leave it up on your max world tier, but you could get more epic gear to drop and that could hurt your chances to get the exact pieces suitable for your build. Anything that doesn't work can immediately be broken down for materials, and I would also like to mention that the bosses drop nice amounts of titanium, which you will need later on for leveling up your gear. Now the areas that I try to avoid farming for gear are the Historian Quest, Bounty Hunt Quest, and believe it or not, the Challenge Tier content, but let me first explain before you flame me. Both the Historian and Bounty Hunt Quest take much longer than the Monster Hunt Quest, and what we want is bulk loot in the fastest time possible. Challenge Tier content only awards you with loot at the very end when you open the drop pod, and whereas you may get 9-12 to 12 items at the end of a CT gold clear, you could be getting that from the Horus monster farm every 20-30 to 30 seconds. Now, if you are farming for legendary items, then absolutely you want to hit CT 14 and 15 content and get those gold tier clear times. Okay, so at this point you made it through the first two steps. You put together your build blueprint with the right attributes and you physically and efficiently gone out and farmed for mass amounts of loot that meet those requirements. So now we're up to step three for beating down the RNG loot machine and that is that you want to take the gear you farmed plus your build blueprint that you put together in the planning phase and you want to go see Dr. Zahidi for the optimization step. Now each time you improve the rarity of a gear piece, it will offer you to pick from a selection of three randomly selected mods and here's where you get really lucky. If you get one of those three mods to show up as one of the mods you have on your build blueprint, you are golden. If not, full stop, scrap the item, just move on. Now the reason we need this step to work is so that we can then go back in and mod slot 1 to exactly what we want from either a tier 1, 2, or 3 mod based on our build blueprint. 
if we are instead spending that mod recalibration to fix mod slot 2 and what the game initially offered us, we are never going to get to that end goal of a perfectly crafted build. Now during this process, I would say that you do not want to compromise your build plans. If the first rarity improvement mod offerings are not what you wanted, that piece is now going to be scrapped and you just need to get another. Now I know it sounds like it will take forever, but in reality, with just a little bit of luck and intense planning, you can have exactly what you want on your builds. By the way, I also frequently check the Rift Town and Trench Town gear vendors just in case they have a common or rare piece that meets my requirements for attributes. Doesn't happen often, but I do check constantly. Also, I haven't discussed weaponry during this video, but the entire planning, farming, and modding steps can easily be applied to that aspect of your build as well. If I were to go back in and try and summarize everything I just spelled out for you, it would first be to avoid falling into the RNG loot drop trap of just settling for whatever the game awards you with. If you were looking for the best gear and that perfect build, you need to concentrate on common and rare gear with the correct attributes. From there, and using your build blueprint, you can then farm the monster hunts and more specifically, Horus for quick gear drops while trying to avoid the other quest lines and CT content. Once you have the right gear with the right attributes, you are ready to try the optimization mechanics. And what you are wanting is for one of your chosen mods to appear as one of the three random selections the game will offer you. If it does, you are all set and ready to move on. If not, the piece will be broken down for materials. And remember to not settle or stray from your plan for the gear and mods. Now using the efficient farm methods and the strategies, you will be able to assemble a really good build in a much shorter time period than if you rely on the RNG loot machine and it's impossible chances of getting the exact piece you want for your build. So there you go, the three-step guide I use to farm efficiently for the exact pieces I need for my builds. And I also try to give you some tips and guidelines for what you want to look for in the gear, as well as the best farm spots, and finally how to engage with Dr. Zahidi and the entire mod process. If you should have any questions at all about anything in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you haven't yet smashed that sub button for more intensive Outriders content, please do so. And don't forget to ring the bell to receive all future upload notifications from my channel. If you could take the time to rate and or share the video, it would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to find me over on Twitch, join my community Discord server to discuss all things Outriders related, and of course, follow me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts on most things gaming related. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.